The world is facing a health crisis that is having devastating effects on the health and lives of older adults. A crisis that is causing broad social and economic disruptions. A crisis whose effects ripple across families, communities, societies, workforces, and economies. Yes, I am talking about the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, and every one of these points is true for Alzheimer's disease and dementia as well. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today as co-chair of the Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative and the convener of the Global CEO Initiative on Alzheimer's Disease. As the chair of Us Against Alzheimer's and a member of the World Dementia Council, I am particularly impressed with the leadership from Croatia and the European Union on the important topic of aging and Alzheimer's. Additionally, I would like to thank the government of Finland, who has also shown great leadership on this issue and included me in their proceedings during their EU presidency last year. Scientific and medical advances have brought us unprecedented longevity, raising average global life expectancy by more than 30 years in the past century. Today, the world has about 1 billion people over the age of 60, two thirds of the entire population that have ever lived past the age of 60. And this number is projected to double by mid-century. Europe is at the forefront of this trend. There were more than 100 million people over the age of 65 in the European Union in 2018. And this is projected to grow to almost 150 million people by 2050. Today's aging and longevity are a modern miracle and every nation benefits from these advancements. At the same time, rapid population aging presents a number of pressing challenges for every nation, for global economic growth and for families around the world. There are more chronic diseases, larger retired populations are expecting pension and health benefits, and fewer working age cohorts to pay the necessary taxes. Aging populations will also dramatically increase the burden of age-related health conditions. Age remains the number one risk factor for Alzheimer's, and dementia is the epicenter of the looming crisis. Dementia is the most expensive and most feared chronic disease of aging, and the biggest single disease demand on working age caregivers. More than 50 million families live with dementia today around the world. And this number is projected to triple to 150 million by 2050. And once again, the aging population in Europe puts it at the forefront of these developments. The number of people over 60 with dementia in the European Union was 9 million in 2018. And by 2050, it will be more than 15 million, 10% of the total population over age 60. Imagine what would happen if we could flatten the dementia curve and prevent or delay a third of these cases. Emerging science tells us that it's possible to delay or prevent this disease through diet, other lifestyle changes, and the medical management of hypertension and diabetes. Together, we must do more to prevent dementia in addition to our efforts to find effective treatments. Without an urgent and coordinated response, this dramatic rise in prevalence will generate tremendous impacts on people, families, communities, and national healthcare systems, as well as on economic growth, workforce size, and participation rates, and fiscal and monetary policy. Across the world, more than 2.4 million people die from dementia every year. Dementia is the fifth leading cause of death worldwide, and the only one of the top leading causes of death for which there is no truly effective treatment or cure. Dementia is responsible for roughly $1 trillion annually around the world, and this total is projected to double by 2030 and double again by 2050. That is why it is both foreseeable and unescapable that chronic aging-related diseases such as dementia will be the next emerging pandemic. It threatens to be larger, longer, more devastating, and more costly than COVID-19. The world needs a global preparedness plan for dementia to change this trajectory. There's a growing consensus about the elements of a dementia preparedness plan, early and systematic testing and detection, 
a standing global industrial strength trial ready system for testing new therapies in humans, public health intervention plans to reduce peak prevalence, and a healthcare system ready and able to get the right intervention to the right patient at the right time in disease progression. Achieving this plan will require overcoming a number of challenges that range from basic science of dementia to healthcare and public health system preparedness. First, researchers need a better understanding of the heterogeneity of the causal pathways of dementia. Second, Differential pathways require biomarkers that can identify the differential populations for testing differential interventions. Third, current sporadic clinical testing systems must be built into efficient global trial platforms. Fourth, healthcare systems need accessible and affordable diagnostics to identify those at risk for dementia and deliver precision interventions to the right patient at the right time. Fifth, physicians need training, tools, and incentives to provide early accurate diagnoses. And six, the public needs the hope and confidence that there is something they can do now to prevent and treat cognitive decline. I believe the unprecedented global response of the COVID-19 pandemic offers important lessons for the costly battle against dementia. The COVID-19 crisis shows that a broad coalition of governments, international organizations, the private and philanthropic sectors, scientific organizations, and the public can find the resources, the collaborative mechanisms, and the political will needed to address a looming public health catastrophe like COVID-19, but also for dementia. For both COVID-19 and dementia, there are five parts to an effective response. First, a broad, coordinated, clear public health effort to promote risk reduction and prevention. Second, easily accessible tests and tools for early and accurate detection, diagnosis, treatment, and potential vaccination. Third, concerted efforts to increase health system preparedness. This includes a health system workforce and infrastructure that is trained, equipped, and motivated to treat this pandemic. Fourth is urgency to accelerate research and innovation for prevention, treatment, and for vaccines. Finally, that plan requires accurate real-world data to understand who is at risk and clear plans for a response to reduce that risk and to mitigate impact for those diagnosed. That's the kind of global preparedness plan we're developing with the Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative. This is a partnership launched in January between the World Economic Forum and the Global CEO Initiative on Alzheimer's Disease, which I'm privileged to convene. The Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative is based on the proposition that all nations and all sectors are in this together, that individual governments, as well as intergovernmental organizations, the pharmaceutical and biotech industries, leading researchers and patient advocates must come together to develop and execute a consensus preparedness plan to accelerate research and health system preparedness and dementia. This is a partnership model that the World Economic Forum pioneered several years ago to accelerate research into vaccine development for pandemics. That work now is at the center of COVID-19 vaccine work. The Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative will link current dementia efforts, scale successful models, and create new initiatives with three areas of focus. First, we're developing a large global cohort of those with or at risk of dementia to reach populations of greater genetic and phenotypic diversification than existing cohorts. Second, we are creating a standing global clinical trial support platform with the capacity to increase the speed and efficiency of global trials, which will bring new drugs to market at a faster rate. Finally, this collaborative is advancing healthcare system preparedness to improve early detection and diagnosis, to assure the availability of the tests and tools we need, to strengthen the healthcare workforce readiness, and to allow for universal access to affordable and effective treatments and vaccines for Alzheimer's. We believe these steps are essential to making faster progress towards the discovery, testing, and delivery of precision interventions for dementia. Over the past few weeks, we have created work groups for each of these areas and we're now developing business and finance plans to execute on impactful projects in each of those areas. Our goal is to launch this initiative in Davos next January. 
We are pleased that former Finnish Prime Minister Esko Aho has agreed to serve on our collaborative leadership group. And we're also impressed with the leadership that's been shown by the Dutch government in this area. European leaders have led historic efforts to address dementia, including the first national dementia plan developed in France in 2001, the United Kingdom's focus on dementia at the meeting of G8 health ministers in 2013. This 2013 meeting set a global goal of identifying a disease-modifying drug by 2025, and it established the World Dementia Council, on which I am privileged to serve. Dementia was spotlighted at the 2019 meeting of the G20 in Japan. Japan, as you know, is the most rapidly super-aging country in the world. The G20 communique of the health ministers from that meeting set a goal to have every nation adopt a prevention and risk reduction strategy for dementia. A growing number of governments around the world are now poised to take action, indeed putting dementia on the center stage a few months ago at the World Economic Forum. There are other hopeful signs of progress from researchers and industry in the fight against this disease, including positive clinical trial results, a promising pipeline of new therapies, and a number of innovative private sector dementia initiatives in countries around the globe. I believe that leading governments, companies, and international organizations are better positioned than ever before to change the trajectory of dementia in our aging world. What is missing? Global leadership. I believe that the Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative is a potential global mechanism for that global leadership. On behalf of the Davos Alzheimer's Collaborative, we look forward to discussing this urgent issue with European policymakers. We want to explore opportunities for collaboration to deepen our shared commitment to speeding dementia innovation and preparedness. We need your engagement. We need a coalition of governments committed to the issue and to this collaborative effort. I hope you will reach out to us in follow-up. Together, we must seize this opportunity and take the steps that make 2020 a turning point in the fight to stop Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Thank you for having me here today. I wish you good luck and good work in all of your deliberations, and I look forward to working with all of you in the fight against dementia.